don't think that you're fine. It's almost your birthday. You're okay. Sure, they weren't. Midsummer is the story of Danny, a young woman who loses her family and finds a new one. When her bipolar sister murders their parents and kills herself in an inexplicably senseless act, Danny is left unable to cope with her grief. She has no support system in place, her friends and family either distant or absent, and she turns to her boyfriend, pointedly named Christian. He offers no solace and seems not to really care for Danny at all. His friends in turn just want him to be rid of her, and her suffering is treated as just an odious burden he doesn't need. She's expected to simply move on, and stop being such a killjoy. Danny, having no recourse, tries her best, and in an attempt to find a place for herself among others, asks to join the friends in their expedition to Sweden, where they will be attending the midsummer festivities of a pagan commune. Upon arrival, following an initial display of acceptance and drug-induced euphoria, the visitors are almost immediately subjected to witness a ritual suicide in which the eldest villagers jump to their deaths from a precipice. The horror of the initial shock is compounded when one of the victims doesn't die, and his head has to be smashed in with a special mallet to complete the ritual. Outraged, the most decisive of the visiting group declare their intention to leave the next day. Despite a clear indication of the village practicing a type of morality at basic conflict with that of the visitors, nobody seems to feel threatened or the urgency to depart. But they are affected to varying degrees, and to varying degrees they become a problem for the cultists. People start to disappear. So they've just gone. They've left me just now. Now, Connie, there was no room in the truck, yet it is coming right back for you. Yeah. <laughs> this is bullshit. As the strange festivities continue, it becomes increasingly clear that some of the visitors have been murdered, and the story culminates with a ritual sacrifice in which Danny is not only witness, but as May Queen, also an active participant. As the corpses of her friends burn and her lover dies, Danny is finally able to smile, happy now that she's found her place with a new family. This is because death and the grieving process are understood in the village to be part of a natural cycle. They are planned and ritualized events. They are not unexpected, not inexplicable, not unbearable. Danny has found a place where the agony of inexpressible pain and suffering without catharsis is simply not a part of life. And she is home. Midsummer has two chief areas that cause problems and prevent it from being a story that I can embrace without reservation. You didn't apologize. You said sorry, which sounds more like too bad. Maybe I should just go home. What? No, no. I'm just trying to understand. Don't get me wrong. It's a good film, but I lament the great film it might have been. The first problem is with pacing. The first act in particular tends to drag, and the movie's running length seems bloated. I think this could simply have been addressed by having Danny's inclusion in the outing to Sweden part of the plan from the beginning, which would then be disrupted by her family's deaths. This would eliminate some of the will-she-won't-she-accompany-them subplot, which really offers nothing but the reinforcement of ideas we've already been presented, the callousness of her boyfriend and his friend's distaste for both her and their relationship. 
The larger problem is with tonal shifts, partly due to a first act shock followed by less striking events, and it shares this with Hereditary. Are you not disturbed by what we just saw? Yeah, of course I am. That was really, really shocking. I'm trying to keep an open mind, though. That's cultural, you know? We stick our elders in nursing homes. I'm sure they find that disturbing. I think we really need to just at least try to acclimate. Midsummer too often tries to remind us that it is ostensibly a horror film. But essentially, this is a movie dealing with the dramatic question of how a young woman can cope with a senseless loss when surrounded by indifference. In the canon of horror, there's an obvious comparison to be made between Midsommar, with its involvement of pagan ritual and sacrifice, conflicting values, and religious strangeness, and The Wicker Man. While the two are actually very different stories, I think it's important to understand the contrast between them in order to illuminate what it is about Midsommar that doesn't really work. In The Wicker Man, devoutly religious Sergeant Howie, played by the great Edward Woodward in his finest role, is confronted with a community that practices ancient pagan rites, and has completely abandoned Christian affectation. As a staunch Church of England parishioner, Howie is shocked by their behavior and attitudes. Their seeming unconcern for a missing little girl and refusal to cooperate with his investigation are a source of frustration, but there's a much deeper impact arising from the fundamental challenge to ideas he has held as sacrosanct and unquestionable. Can I do anything for you, Sergeant? Oh, I doubt it. Seeing it all raving mad. Stymied and misdirected by the locals, how he ends up their unwitting victim, a sacrifice to gods they believe will bring prosperity. He is martyred in the most absurd and, to him, inexplicable way, and he goes to his death screaming religious admonishments at his captors. For those who consider The Wicker Man to be a horror film, for it is a film of many genres, it is this conflict in which its horrifying elements lay. It's in the inversion of normalcy, where moral values held so closely as to defy doubt or question are discarded in favor of those seemingly senseless and arbitrary. Can you not see? There is... There is no sun god. There is no... Goddess of the fields. Your... Your crops failed because your strains failed. Fruit is not meant to be grown on these islands. It, it's against nature. Well, don't you see that killing me is not going to bring back your apples? Summer Isle, you know it won't. Well, go on, man, tell them, tell them it won't! I know it will. This can be understood as a condemnation of religious bigotry and the hypocrisy of a colonialist mindset that presumes its own values to be correct, while others must be proselytized. And as such, it's not really horror at all. The Wicker Man, in short, is a film that does not present as horror, but which is taken as such by viewers who find it disturbing in ways they cannot reconcile. You simply never understand the true nature of sacrifice. In contrast, I offer that Midsummer is a movie that tries very hard to be a horror film, when in fact its essential story simply is not. It's a story about grief, not fear. Yet it lingers on images of the grotesque and indulges techniques of the horror genre in order to attempt to affect viewers the way The Wicker Man did. One of the first indications of the difference between the two is found when the ritual suicide is rejected by shocked visitors. One of the village elders attempts to console and to explain to them that the ritual is necessary. She attempts to cast it in a favorable light. Not so in The Wicker Man. There's no attempt to assuage Sergeant Howie's objections to local values. He's simply dismissed out of hand as a rather amusingly ignorant outsider. But they are are naked. Naturally, it's much too dangerous to jump through the fire with your clothes on. Because there's no attempt to justify the inversion of normalcy, 
it is able to play out as a source of psychic disturbance, rather than simply being reduced to a difference of opinion. By explaining, Midsommar also diffuses the effect. This may have been necessary, given the rather incredible plot contrivance that has the visitors remaining after such a clear demonstration of a split from their fundamental values. Having seen the old man's head smashed in, any normal person would surely have left immediately, and at the very least been a little concerned about one's own well-being in the midst of ritual murderers. Where Sergeant Howie is alarmingly cut off from the coast and unable to call for assistance, nor seemingly to leave, here we get the majority of visitors fascinated and deciding to remain to see what more this odd culture has to offer. Where Howie has a false sense of security stemming from his self-perception as an authority figure, the visitors here really have no reason to think they're safe. Proceeding from this, instead of the strange effect of debauchery and apparent indifference of the people that so troubles Sergeant Howie, Midsummer resorts to the heady effects of hallucinogenics on its protagonist in order to generate a disturbing atmosphere. This is accomplished with some very interesting visuals, and the scenes are not ineffective, but again, because the strangeness is a result of war perception, rather than a fundamental inversion of moral normalcy, it lacks psychological significance. Where Howie has to contend with the implacable smiles of those who are in the process of murdering him, Danny is a guest invited to watch those whose indifference has hurt her sacrifice to perceived greater good, and with the excuse of the drugs to justify her own inaction. For Danny, there is catharsis and relief. For Howie, there is only dismay, despair, and death. So while I think there's a good story in the material of Midsummer about death and grieving, it's not a horror story. Perhaps it would have been a more complete and satisfying viewing experience if it hadn't tried to be. Thank you for viewing. Please like, share, share your thoughts below. And if you don't like what I had to say, shoot me. How long is the drive? About four hours. Oh my god. <laughs>